What's up YouTube? This is Dave signing off Point 7. This is another video to do with my weekly review for the Exorcist TV series episode 6 Star of the Morning review. <laughs> and another video from Dave. And yeah, pretty much this is my weekly review for the Exorcist TV series, which I have to say and can't stress enough, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, this series is just phenomenal. It is the sequel I've always wanted. You know, not that second one, not that shit they gave us after the original Exorcist. This, to me, is the is the true sequel. I like the third Exorcist, and I like some of the ones after that, but that second one was fucking awful. I mean, that could be, to me, even though it's part of the Exorcist family, the worst movie ever made. It, I mean, how do you make a, a movie like the original and then do that second one? I don't know. But yeah, this week was really good. The only thing is, it was a, it was slow. But I mean, coming off of an episode like we had two weeks ago, because we had a you know a, a, a pretty much a two week break, uh, about a one week break. Then the next, then this was the uh, new episode. Uh, you know, coming off that episode of like the the one, the last one that was just fucking phenomenal. They dropped two huge bombs. Uh, and, the, and the huge twist, you know, Angela being uh, Reagan, and then an even, you know, even another bomb where her fucking mother shows up and you got Henry fucking baffled. Of, he don't even know who his fucking wife is. Now he's got this movie star, ex-movie star, you know, showing up as, at his house pretty much as his fucking mother-in-law. <laughs> you know, you gotta really think what that guy's going through, and that's why he was so fucking pissed this episode. But like I said... Coming off of, you know, the last episode, I did not expect this episode to be, like, action-packed like that was with everything that went on with that episode. But this had some good shit in it, too. Um, you know, it's like The Walking Dead. You know, that, that episode everybody's waiting on to see who Negan killed, you know. And then you had that amazing episode, which was one of the, probably the, one of the best episodes ever for a TV series was, you know, The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 1. But then you had the next week, you know, which was a slow episode if you watch The Walking Dead. But I'm just saying, in general, you get a big episode, it's usually a slow episode. But this was actually a fucking good episode and had some great references to the original Exorcist that I really liked. And I even got like an end of days kind of feel. If you ever saw that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I'll go into in just a little bit. But pretty much, I'm on a time limit. Like I said, I have to do videos for my tablet. I have 15 minutes to do them, so I'm going to knock it out as fast as I can, recapping it, give you my thoughts and opinion, and call it a review. <laughs> All right, so basically, it starts off with Wake Up San Diego, the thing from last week where, you know, it was like a TV uh, series that they did about, like, uh, Reagan when she was younger. And, her, you know, with the mother, basically, we learned, writing a book about her called The Devil and, and, the, and My Daughter. And they're basically talking about her book and her experiences. And the talk show host basically asks Reagan uh, what happened in Georgetown. She don't really remember. And he said, you know, this shit's going to pretty much follow. In other words, he said, this shit's going to follow you for the rest of your life. What are you going to do? And we learned what she did. She changed her name, started a new life. But the devil still found her. <laughs> All right. So then it goes to a scene with Chris McNeil and Kat basically talking. And you got uh, Angela and Henry arguing in the background. You got Angela that don't want fucking her mother there. I don't blame her after, you know, her basically benefiting off of her daughter, you know. Which I have to say here, you know, I couldn't see any mother, you know, after a, a horrific experience like hap what happened in the original Exorcist. If any parent went through that and, and, and their kid made it out alive and they made and she's lucky she made it out alive. I couldn't even see if they were poor. She lost her job as a, you know, a movie actress like she did. Uh, because of all the shit that went down, I couldn't see her trying to even benefit off that, any parent. So and that, that that makes her a scummy fucking mother. So I could see why Angela does not like her. And then Henry being mad because, you know, hey, you know, he, he don't even know who the fuck he's married to. You would think she would at least tell her husband what happened, you know, if not anybody else. So that's what's going on with that. And then it goes into a scene where you basically have Kat and uh, Mc, uh, Chris McNeil, the mother, talking. And she tells, uh, you know, uh, Kat how she learned about what was going on with Casey because she kept tabs on Angela through this internet service. And that's, like I said, how they, she learned about what was going on with Casey. So then uh, Kat asks Chris, is this the same possession as what happened to her mother, you know? 
And, you know, Chris McNeil says, I hope not, but she knows better. <laughs> uh, and then you have this scene with uh, Chris McNeil going to leave, and then Henry fucking stands his ground and says, nope, you're staying here. And probably because he wants to know who his fucking family is. You know, he don't even know who he's been married to, like I said. So he wants to learn more about this family, you know, you know maybe get to know his mother-in-law. That's what I gathered out of that. So he takes his ground, he says, pretty much, fuck Angela, she's staying here, I don't care if you're mad, whatever. <laughs> So then it goes to a scene with basically Angela, Father Marcus, and Father Tomas pretty much preparing for the worst. Uh, Father Marcus tells Angela she could be dead. The demon's been in her for a while. Expect the worst. Then it goes to a part with Father Tomas, Father Marcus walking, and he's still pissed Father Marcus at Father Tomas for, for basically giving in to the devil, you know, last week and telling him, you know, you got a lot to lose. You got your church. You got uh, this woman on the side. You know, Father Marcus is basically a loner, and he's a you know he's an he's an exorcist. You know, he's like you're not ready for this shit, <laughs> and I don't blame him. You know, I wouldn't want to go face the demon and be with with that priest with all that shit going on in his head. So, then you have this whole press conference where the shit hits the fucking fan. You have the whole you know. Uh, Rand's family up there with uh, the police basically offering a $100,000 reward to find Casey. Then you have all the victims, uh, you know, relatives and friends and family from the neighborhood that, you know, all the nine victims got fucking brutally murdered. They show up and they're like, whoa, they're like, whoa, they're like, uh, why are they getting help and we're not? Who are we? <laughs> you know, are we third world citizens or something? Pretty much. And they start fucking flipping out. And it's true. It's like rich people always get all the help. The poor people fucking suffer. You know, and I, and I don't blame them. And then one of the ladies uh, has the cameras focus on her. And she starts reading off the names of the nine victims. And like, hey, show us some recognition. I don't blame them at all. So then it goes from that to basically a scene with the cops asking Henry and uh, Angela about you know, what what all went down at her house with this exorcism, you know, and was Father Marcus the only uh, priest there? You know, they want to know who was involved. Then they showed her some pictures of the, and Henry, um, some pictures of the ambulance that got fucking carried. <laughs> you know, if you watch that scene with the uh, ambulance and the fucking crush, that was really cool, but it reminded me of Carrie. This show has a lot of, like, you know, references to other, like, not references, but it reminds me of other things, like Carrie, End of Days, like I said, you know, a lot of other movies with The Exorcist. I, I like that. I think it's cool. I'm a fan of Carrie. I'm a fan of End of Days. I'm a fan of all, all the movies, Damien, uh, The Omen, all that shit. Uh, but yeah, basically as her, like, you know, uh, you know, since she, uh, fucking ripped that guy's jaw apart on the subway could she be could she have done this <laughs> you know and they're like just like kind of you know didn't say shit then you have a part with chris mcneil talking to cat about now this is the part really like talking to cat about losing her career and what she went through and what she had to do to survive after you know basically you know hitting rock bottom with the whole thing that happened but then i like this part she tells the story of like the whole thing with Captain Howdy, and this was another great reference to the original Exorcist that I liked. And she pretty much says, you know, I was doing five scenes a day, and, you know, my daughter was home playing with the Ouija board, talking to the fucking devil. <laughs> you know, I, did, I, did, I, was, uh, you know, I was a millionaire, but I didn't have nobody to watch her. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't hire nobody. <laughs> you know, that, that's the part I was like, okay, yeah. yeah. I just let my daughter play with the Ouija board. I, I was busy making movies. Um, then you got this part where basically you have that, you know, the lady, uh, uh, Maria Walters basically talking to Father Tomas and basically, uh, about the, that she's happy what he did with the money. And then Jessica shows up, you know, and he goes and talks to Jessica. And then you got, uh, this part where you have Angela basically at, like, this, this place where they're all waiting on, you know, information to find Casey, all the people that are supporting that. And she basically, uh, picks up the phone and gets a call from the fucking devil. He says, do you think God is punishing you? You wanted me in you. And she fucking freaks out and all of a sudden wakes up. It was a dream, but it was the devil in her head fucking torturing her. I think she's going to be possessed by the end of the season. That's just my predictions. So, then you have a scene with Father Tomas and Jessica, and basically Jessica's telling him, hey, I let, you know, everything's done with my husband, I got my place around the corner, you can come anytime, leave the priest shit at the door, come in, let's do it. 
and no strings attached. That's basically what she's telling him. He says he can't do that. And then you have a scene with uh, Angela, basically, and he Angela and Henry uh, basically going over shit. You know, Henry's still pissed about, you know, who the fuck is this woman he's married to? Basically, you know, wanting answers, you know, why she didn't, like, tell him the truth, shit like that. Then all of a sudden, you have a part with this whole, like, meeting thing that's going on. That This is, like, the thing that reminds me of, like, the end of days for some reason. And this wheelchair guy that's talking this professor and father Bennett he's not feeling him at all so then you have a part with basically Angela uh, pretty much uh, you know you know getting a drink you know talking to I think she's talking to Chris uh, over here and Chris talked to some reporter and she goes in the room kicks the reporter out of the room gets the feeling that she's doing the same shit she did back in the day trying to benefit off of this then all of a sudden you get a call from the coroner's office and they may have found Casey. So then it goes to a scene where basically back to Father Bennett and he gets mad at the professor and he says, aren't you uh, full of surprises? Something, something like that. And basically you learn they're all kind of corrupted. That's where he's kind of feeling something's going on. Uh, then at the they end up at the coroner's, coroner's office, find out it isn't Casey. So that's good. Then, this is where it gets starts getting really good. This is a good scene of the show. You start, you see his part with Father Marcus and the rats coming out of this, like, area from underground, like, you know, in the park or something. And they, and he goes under there, there's all these fucking bums in there, you know, fucking have dead animals, uh, you know, cats are dead, somebody's holding a dead bird, they're all acting fucking, cr you know, really weird. You're hearing the demon, like, from Casey a little bit. Then all of a sudden the bums attack him and then Casey comes out of this pile of fucking like trash and fucking blankets and she starts doing the exorcist crawl on the wall, on the side of the wall and then gets on the ground with her head backwards and growls. Fucking awesome. Great reference to the original exorcist. I was wondering where we were going to see that. If you ever saw the original exorcist and the uncut version or if it was, if you got, the, if you were lucky enough to go to the theater, I wasn't, I wasn't old enough then. Uh, to see it in the theater, that was what they showed, the Exorcist spider crawl that's referenced in ton of, tons of movies have ripped that off, but that's where it came from. Great, great scene. Then you have Maria, basically, and her people, and all of them are basically, and one thing I forgot to say, they took all the ashes during that press conference with all the people flipping out about the nine victims. During that scene, they're showing what they did with the organs of all the people that they killed. They basically cremated them for this part, and they basically... Uh, pretty much end up like, you know, blowing the ashes into the air and basically they end up going into like the, the lady, uh, Maria Walters wants the ashes to go into her, but they end up going into the police superintendent taking his body. So I'm assuming that's the real, I'm assuming that's going to be the real, uh, the, that's going to be the demon that took, uh, uh, Angela Reagan and the other demon that's in case he's just another demon helping him. Or maybe that's a devil and then another demon. Um, so basically, that went on. And then you have the whole thing with Casey basically eating a duck. In, I think it's in like, you know, um, somewhere in the park and by a pond or something. And basically, she's eating a duck. Father Marcus finds her and then basically gives her like a, like, it's like he's baptized, bat, baptizing her or something in the water. And then this big, like, little wave goes by through the water, and she comes out, says something to him. And I thought for a second there she was, like, he, like, cured her. But then they showed previews the next week, and it don't look like that. It looks like it's shit's going to fucking even get even worse for her. So that's that's pretty much my review, guys. I liked it. I got an end of days kind of feel. If you ever saw that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger with the whole thing with the... Uh, you know, the meeting with the, you know, just how they're all meeting up and like they're bringing the, 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 the one, somebody's coming. It, it just reminds me of end of days a lot. Um, but yeah, this was a great episode. Not as good as last week's, of course, with all the shit that happened last week, but this week was good. Last week I gave it a 10. This week I'm giving it an 8.5. I really did enjoy the episode. It was pretty good. Slow, but good. Stuff we needed to know, you know, stuff I was wondering about. I knew that lady Maria... Uh, Maria Walters, I knew she was crooked, I said it in one of my reviews, I just couldn't put my finger on it, especially after that part where you saw her, where Father Tomas's little boy comes in the room, and then he goes and sees her husband, and the husband's like sticking her tongue at her, and it's, and you knew something was up, the kid ran out, he ran out, she looked all crazy, 
But that's my review, guys. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Ran out of time. More videos to come. Later, YouTube.